All right, howdy, folks. I'm Ross Weaver. I'm back again. I'm here with a new series. It's going to be a Metal Gear Solid V mission talk-through. Now, you've heard of walkthroughs where people tell you how to complete the mission. Well, this is a talk-through where I'm going to talk through all of the stuff structurally and narratively that's going on and explain what the heck it all means, basically. It's going to be kind of like a college class, like a lecture. It's going to be kind of boring for most of y'all, I'm sure. I'm not going to cut in a lot of video with the... Uh, with the, with this of all the mission stuff i'm gonna let y'all kind of do all that yourself in your head i'm gonna be talking about a lot of different stuff here and jumping around a lot and i'm trying to make these videos a little bit quicker just so i can get the info out there uh, so i'll probably am not going to be doing a lot of editing on these uh, apologies in advance for that so what i'm gonna do today is i'm gonna talk about missions one and three in metal gear solid v the phantom pain uh mission zero and mission two just not going to talk about them for now. Mission Zero, I'll talk about when it gets to Mission 46. And Mission 2, I can, I'm just going to skip over it for now. I might go back and mention it at a later point, but it's such a short little thing. It'll probably, it comes up, but it's not really worth devoting its own segment to. Missions 1 and 3 we need to talk about, though, because once you understand what's going on in these first two missions, the, the first two like real proper missions that you do out in Afghanistan, you'll see how... There's like a whole layer of kind of lies in this game, kind of the fake news, the 1984 thing, information control. But you can see that despite all that stuff, what we're doing is stuff that you kind of know really well, actually. You, you would recognize it immediately if it wasn't so sort of Frankenstein, essentially. Um, so I've got my, I'm sitting here in my, you know, in my room where I chill. I'm going to pull up my old videos of uh, these missions to kind of help me with reference stuff, but I've, I've basically just got a couple pages of notes here. I'm going to go through and just talk about this stuff for a little bit, and hopefully y'all can learn some stuff. Uh, apologies in advance for all the noises you might hear. That's why I'm using this microphone. There's It's Sunday afternoon. There's like kids playing next door. My dogs are going to go crazy at some point, I'm sure. Anyway, sorry about all that. So let's get to Phantom Limbs. What the heck is it about? Right? Like, what are we doing here? Who's this? Is this really cause? This guy looks a little. What's, his, what's with his eyes? You know, he's always missing an arm and a leg. There's all these uh, little white floaty dust particles all around him that seem to be just kind of all over this game. What the heck's about all that? Well, I'll get to it. So, if you've played Ground Zeroes, which I'm assuming you have, or at least you know the missions really well and you've watched a crap ton of videos on them, if you're watching this, if you haven't done all that, this video probably won't be very helpful to you. But anyways, good luck. Uh, this is basically a Ground Zero side op, what we're doing in Phantom Missions, in, or in, uh, in Phantom Limbs. Uh, this Ground Zero side ops is the Intel Agent Rescue, okay? Now that's, that's in Ground Zero is where we go rescue Hideo Kojima. And we are in, uh, we're sitting out of the side of Morpho, He's on the base in a jeep, and he's going all over the base, and he needs cover, and we got to, like, well, the first time you do it, you got to kill a whole bunch of dudes and blow up a whole bunch of trucks, and it's a really fun mission. That is what we're doing here in Phantom Limbs. It's the exact same thing, because you know when you rescue Hideo in Ground Zeroes, he does the same animation with him being kind of like with his hand over his, his head and handcuffed up here that Kaz does in this mission, so it's the, it's the same thing. Kaz is our intel agent, right? He's he's basically our intel guy. He's the head of the intel platform. So, this also kind of has some relations to the main op in Ground Zeroes, which I'm just going to kind of... I wrote this down here, but I'm going to kind of skip it uh, a little bit. I'm just going to briefly mention it. Essentially, when you start the Ground Zeroes main op, what you do is you go to Chico's cell and you get intel on where Pause is. So, Chico gives you intel... And then you go to Paz's cell. Well, here, in Phantom Limbs, you have to go get intel on where Kaz is, and then you go get him. So Kaz is really your main mission, kind of like how Paz was your main mission in Ground Zeroes. But this is really just depicting the side op. We'll get to the actual Paz rescue later on in the missions in the Phantom Pain. Um, this is kind of our stand-in for the, for the Hideo rescue, but it's also kind of got these parallels to Paz there for reasons which will become apparent later. Um, but you know, you got to go get Intel on where cause is being kept. And so this place where you're going to go get the Intel 
where Kaz is being kept, Vialo Village, it's kind of likened to Chico's cell. That will make a lot more sense too once we get along a lot further, but I just I can't go into it right now a whole lot without explaining everything else first. So um there's also some relations in this scenario to some other games. Obviously, if you do this rescue the way you're supposed to do it the first time and you go try to evac Miller, you get ambushed by the skulls and you're on D horse and presumably Miller's on your back or on the back of the horse. So you can just run away from them. And there's this whole chase scene where they chase you through a portion of the whole area and you can either try to shoot them and kill them or just escape the, the area and they'll just kind of quit following you. That's kind of similar to how in a uh, in Metal Gear Solid Three you've got the G- the Jeep chase with Eva and all these people are chasing you and she's driving and you've got to shoot them all. So like Miller's kind of likened to Eva here a little bit, um, be, and he is kind of the mother of the base. Like in a way, if if Mother Base is the mother and he's the commander, well then he's kind of like the Mother Base's like active arm, right? So he's kind of part of the mother part of base. Uh, I know that maybe a little bit of a stretch to some of y'all, but just go with it. Trust me, it's it's good stuff. Um, and also, of course, that Metal Gear Solid Three Jeep chase relates to the other big chase in Metal Gear Solid Four with Big Mama. Um, so you can just think of the B and B core kind of as like the skulls. There you go. So now, relating this to the Phantom Pain, however, requires a big thing. Essentially we've got to figure out how Afghanistan relates to Diamond Dog's mother base. And I'm just going to tell you right now, Afghanistan is Diamond Dog's mother base. It's the exact same structures. It's just we see them differently whenever we get in the helicopter and go in the sky and then we come back down. And it's as if we've become miniaturized too. So it's like the base that we're on when we return to mother base is like the full size base and the one we're operating on. Imagine yourself as like a miniaturized figure that's now been placed back on that on that strut platform, and the strut platform has been totally like changed to look like Afghanistan. That's more or less what's going on here. So just to go down the list, first of all, VLO Village is your command structure. The Eastern Communications Post is the intel structure. Waksin Barracks is the combat strut. Gwande, Dawandehar, where you're about to go rescue Cause, that's the base development platform. Spoog May Keep is actually standing in for the quarantine platform, where we start. We come from the quarantine platform. We're kind of like a, a virus or a bug that's being introduced into this program. Lamar Khate Palace is like the medical platform. That's the cells and the whole ruined building there. I'll get to it. Dashago Calais, which we're going to get to in Mission 3, that's the R&D platform. In this game, farms are basically R&D. We'll get to it. And then finally, Yako Ubu Supply Depot is your support strut. So those are just the eight main struts of your, your base related to the eight main outposts in Afghanistan. Now, I know there's more outposts, but we'll get to those. Those are representing Camp Omega, basically. We'll get, and something else. We'll get to it. But now that we've got through all that, let's go back to Phantom Limbs and see what's going on. So I'm, I'm going to turn it on here and kind of zoom through. So you, you first you go to Vialo Village, and there's this tower, this communications array, and you go up there into the radio room and you get the intel. So that's like you've just infiltrated your own base's command structure and stolen intel on where he's being kept. Now the reason that this is happening this way is because what we're doing here in the Phantom Pain, like I said in my big videos, is all a recreation primarily of the Redacted Mutiny. So we're playing as Snake. Now Snake, he doesn't have Naked Snake as part of his name. He's not Solid Snake or Solidus or Liquid. He's just Snake. That's Fox. That's the code name that Fox gets when he's playing Snake. It's just Snake. There's no extra added words or anything. Venom Snake is like sort of a combination of this snake and others. We'll get to it. But primarily, he's like the younger version of this older snake. And yeah, there's time travel. <laughs> um, so what we're doing here is we're recreating what Snake did right after Peace Walker. So what happened at the end of Peace Walker? Well, after the Peace Walker incident, there's the, the one ending where Boss takes off his bandana, and then that's like its own deal, which we're not going to go into. 
You keep playing, and Boss has still got his bandana on, and you go track down Zadornov a bunch of times, and you build Metal Gear Zeke. And then after you've done all of that, Paz takes Metal Gear Zeke, and you fight her, and you blow up Metal Gear Zeke, and that's the real end of the game. And after those credits roll, Snake gives this whole speech about how this is now outer heaven, and we're going to give our bodies to the earth. It kind of sounds like a dictator who's just like realized he's a dictator and is taking power. It, it, there's some dark stuff in that speech. I really, really recommend y'all go back and listen to that second speech at the end of Peace Walker again, where the screen turns red when he says this is outer heaven. Chapter 5 of Peace Walker, of course, is called Outer Heaven. So what happens is, after the end of MSF at Peace Walker's end, with the Peace Walker incident, I think they rebranded into Outer Heaven. So MSF wasn't MSF anymore, they were really Outer Heaven. So what's going on here is Boss is basically taking control and he's going to do his own thing. And so while Boss, Big Boss, ex-Naked Snake, now Big Boss, is doing all this stuff to make Outer Heaven and make his plans a reality, we need another snake. There's got to be a snake if there's a big boss. So who gets recruited to snake? Well, it's player two in, in Peace Walker. That's, that's the medic, as he's called by most people. But it's really, that's Null, who joined back after Portable Ops. That's Gray Fox. He's the best they ever had, right? Gray Fox is the title for the best. So, I mean, it all kind of fits together. So, we're replaying what Snake did after Big Boss took control of Outer Heaven. So, he starts invest. So, essentially what he's doing is he's investigating his own, his own people. I'm hoping that was a car backfiring and not a gunshot. Uh, he's going off of his base, changing himself to look like Big Boss, and then he's re-infiltrating his base and finding out all these secrets. You see? So there's a whole thing going on where Snake and Boss look the same, and Snake is going through here trying to figure out what the heck Boss has been doing and why all these like mysteries are happening on their base. Essentially, he's like doing a little detective thing. So... He starts by rescuing Hideo. Now, who the heck is this Hideo guy? Like, is this just a... Is this Kurt Vonnegut writing himself into Breakfast of Champions? Yes, actually, kind of. Follow me here. I've said in my videos that I think Hot Coldman in, in Peace Walker is actually Zero in disguise. And that his whole plan is Zero's plan. But it's really just to manipulate the whole situation so that cause I, the future knowledge and recreating the past, loops, blah, blah, blah. So Hot Coldman dies, and then what happens? Well, you can recruit Hideo in Peace Walker. I think it's after or right before the first pupa battle. So that kind of implies to me that at, that maybe Peace Walker as we experience it is somehow recontextualized, and what we actually do in the game is somehow a little bit different than reality. I think that because you can get Hideo right when you get that pupa battle and because of the circumstances of how you get him seems like that's zero actually in disguise and that hot coldman from that point is just his proxy actually that he's already set up the whole plan and the ball's rolling and it can't be stopped now so he just needs a proxy to stand in place and say the script's lines so he can go do something else so i think he puts on the mask of hideo kojima zero already is kind of a stand-in for Hideo Kojima in the universe, right? He's, he's like Kurt Vonnegut in Breakfast of Champions. So I think that Hideo Kojima is actually zero in Peace Walker, and he's, that's where he's hiding. He's on, our, he's on the base. And so who was Snake's XO in this whole investigation to figure out what's going on with Big Boss? Is Hideo. It was zero. So Snake was out in the field doing all this stuff, and his only support was probably zero by himself probably didn't even have contact with the rest of the cypher organization because that'd be too risky that's probably why there's a zero proxy standing in as this guy who's still got the name zero and is talking in this british accent but it's not really the original guy it's probably just another stand-in like a bunch of proxies kind of like nick fury leaving those lmds everywhere so what's going on here is snake and zero fox and zero are trying to trace down big boss's whole mutiny they know it's going on, but they don't have any evidence. They don't exactly know what he's doing, so they got to find out. So they go, first of all, he has to go rescue Hideo. Because Hideo, as we see in Ground Zeroes, has a tape that Boss needs to get. And it's, it's implied that maybe Hideo was 
captured there at Camp Omega for a little bit and then made it out. And then so this is like Snake showing up and rescuing him. So in a sense, it's like this mission that we're doing here didn't maybe didn't really take place on our base. Maybe it took place on Camp Omega, which I'll get to. But MSF as a whole is outer heaven, but it's made up of the MSF offshore base and an onshore land base, which was on the Barranquilla coast, which we know is there at the beginning of Peace Walker, but it just does, kind of doesn't come up, and everything we build is offshore. Well, I think that actually there was an offshore facility and an onshore facility, and they both look exactly the same. So whatever you're building in your offshore facility during Peace Walker is also being built in your onshore facility. I think the same thing's going on in the Phantom Pain, only between Afghanistan and Africa's two locations. But, and I'll get to it, Afghanistan stands in for the offshore base, and Africa stands in for the onshore base. And I'll, from here, just start talking about the onshore base, the stuff on land, as if it's that's just outer heaven. That's the outer heaven base. But the whole organization's also outer heaven. But I'll sometimes just call the offshore base MSF and the onshore stuff outer heaven as a way of delineating between these two for this these first nine ten missions because we don't actually go back to camp omega for a little bit so missions one and three take place sort of like on our base phantom limbs if you do all the mission tasks it kind of has you doing like a little tour of the base where you start at viala calais and you get the intel and then you continue north up to uh what is that uh walks barracks and you have to evac the commander there you know honestly i haven't quite figured out who that commander is yet Probably somebody, you know, in Peace Walker, maybe not the original Miller. Could be, though. Um, it's kind of hard to say. But Snake goes and, and if, knocks out and evacs this guy, probably to, you know, interrogate him and, you know, figure out stuff, what he's doing. Um, let me see here. What are, what are the other mission tasks here? So, yeah, you, you ride over there. Ah, and you have to complete the mission without being discovered by the Skulls, because the Skulls are recontextualization. We know the Skulls weren't there in 75 when this was all happening. I'll get to the time period, but this is probably happening after 74, in the early parts of 75. Probably in January, maybe maybe early February, but probably January. And then I think Ground Zeroes happened in February 75. We'll get to that. So, you got to complete the mission without being discovered by the Skulls. You've got to get the Rough Diamonds and Spoog May Keep. You've got to get the Transport Truck Driver. And you've got to get the Intel File. And you've got to get the Commander. So, I think these are all the things that Snake basically had to do during the original mission back in 75. He had to go kidnap his own people, basically. Uh, but he's not really kidnapping them because they, they're... They've gone on a mutiny. Like they, may, they might not all know it, but they're basically all standing against Cypher the organization now because Big Boss is intending to like do his own thing, and he doesn't really have anybody. He's not like collaborating with anybody. He's kind of just a dictator now. So this is essentially, like I said, this is the side ops to Ground Zeroes, and I think all of those Ground Zero side ops are actually what happened leading up to the main op, and that all of those events and those side ops might have even like been kind of like more compressed and uh, maybe even some of those events that happened at the end of some of the side ops like the jets bombing the base actually happened at the end of the main op and we just we just didn't get to see it okay so that's that's basically enough for mission one um, you know you avoid the skulls you can fight them if you want but they're a recontextualization. They weren't really there in 75. And that's why you're not supposed to fight them for that mission task. So then what's mission three? A hero's way. So I said earlier that the R&D platform is Shago Village. That's what all these farms are. Uh, you'll notice, just to note, um, on your base, the R&D platform doesn't do any farming. The only farming you find on your base is in the support platform, uh, in the basement. There's like hydroponic farms down there. Well, those those are the same thing. 
essentially the support platform and the R&D platform have like some superimpositions going on in this game, which we'll get to. So the R&D platform here, what do you think of when you think of the R&D platform on Diamond Dog's base? It's like a big box, right? And it's got like the hollow empty part with Sahelanthropus is in it when you rest when you acquire Sahelanthropus and then when it leaves, the AI pods there. So this building at Shago Village is square shaped with all these walls and there's this circular shaped well in the middle. That's that's the AI pod spot. It's just it's like as if you've when you've left to, for this whole place to transform the AI pod like jets up and probably goes somewhere else. And that little thing that's left we're like hallucinating it as a well basically. And so what I'm saying is essentially we're hallucinating everything in this whole game. <laughs> like this is all it's it's not really a hallucination though because I think it's like it, it is real. Uh, it's just the parasites. It's it's sort of a parasite fueled hallucination. I think there's like possibly some real stuff that we're not seeing as the way it is. But s these structures all do match. Like I think these structures are really on our base. It's like it's like I said. I think the, I think like the base itself has all these buildings and everything on it. And then we fly away, and it does some kind of crazy transformer stuff, and it turns into a little piece of Afghanistan. It's not really floating on the water. We'll get to it. It's not in the Seychelles. Um, actually, why don't we just talk about it right now? I mentioned there's a land base and an offshore base. And we're told that this offshore base is in Cuba, right? Well, Cuba is over 800 miles from this MSF platform. There's no way a, a helicopter could make it there. But the Barranquilla coast is definitely close enough for a helicopter to go to and from. So it's more likely to me that this isn't happening between somewhere off of the shore of Nicaragua and Cuba. This is actually happening somewhere off the shore of Nicaragua and Colombia on the Barranquilla coast. And that's why they've got to recontextualize all this stuff because it's like another Cuban missile crisis. That's why they turn it into Cuba. The whole thing with MSF doing their their thing, you know, right there with, with, uh, with, with Zeke, it's kind of a, a nuclear missile crisis. It's... So there's all this relations to the Cuban Missile Crisis. So the AI adds the context of Cuba and says, well, you're just in Cuba. <laughs> and that's it. And that's how, that's how the Patriots work. Their system doesn't actually censor anything. It is covering up stuff. But it covers up stuff by adding context. And the context always has symbolic relations back to what's really going on. So they don't really consider it censorship since you can still figure out the truth. That's essentially what's going on here. Sorry I keep looking over here at my screen because I'm just, I'm such a videographer. I've got to make sure this is still like recording and the sound's good and everything. <laughs> I keep forgetting to look into the camera. I'm sorry, y'all. I'll try to get better about that. So you show up here at Shago Village, this R&D platform. And not to spoil anything, Venom Snake is the thing being R&D'd here. Fox essentially is like the prototype for the next generation super soldier and so all these skull soldiers and the female ones too are like copies of him the female ones are copies of him too because quiet's kind of a copy of him too because he's kind of a quiet copy himself they're kind of copies of each other it's it's kind of crazy and beautiful to me actually anyways um so since this thing being r and d is you this guy that you're talking that we're, that we're told to go get, that uh, I murder him in most of the missions because what's the mission task say? You've got to hit him from over 200 meters away with a sniper shot. So that's probably what Snake really did. So in 75, Snake's showing up here, and he sees that Boss has got somebody that's like the next generation of super soldier that's supposed to replace Medic, actually, at that point. Because Medic was their best, and, and Boss wanted, I think, somebody who he could control better than Medic, essentially. Because that's the one thing, right, is that playing with another player in Peace Walker, you have to learn how to cooperate, and you can't control the other person directly. Well, I think Boss was just like, well, I think it'd be easier if I just had drones, people who just followed orders and you know, so on and so forth. Now, this guy that we see in Shago Village says the opposite of that. He says, now, if I was told by my boss to go do something that I knew was wrong, I'd kill my boss. Because that's what Snake, that is what Snake would do. That's what Fox would do, because Fox did do that. 
he was told to go do some bad stuff in mutiny by his boss and he was like no i'm actually going to stick with the guy you're mutinying against because i think what you're doing is despicable and you know traitorous and all that so that's why that's where the whole traitor thing comes from so that's missions one and three is you're essentially starting to retrace the steps of snake in the lead up to the ground zeroes operation now if i had to guess this side op right here now i think there's only i think there's five main side ops in ground zero there's two others i believe but the five main ones we know there's the intel agent rescue there's uh, destroying the anti-air radar, which is actually, uh, or I'm sorry, destroying the anti-air uh, gun emplacements, which is related to destroying the anti-air radar in this game, which is really what you do in the next mission. Which Let's just go on and talk about it. Uh, mission 4 is C2W. So C2W talks about we need to go destroy their anti-air stuff, which we're the, we're the air thing now uh, in our helicopter flying in. So the anti-air is also related to the signals that we're sending in the air. So that's why we have to go take out their intel stuff. This intel platform, the Eastern Communications Post, you'll find later is related to the Devil's House. If you've played Survive, you know when you get to the FOB area, in that area, it's the same spot in the map on Africa where the Devil's House is in the Phantom Pain. And in the Survive, the intel platform from Diamond Dog's base is literally just, like, crashed in an area right behind it. It's literally superimposed on the geography. So if you do that yourself in your mind, the Devil's House is the Eastern Communications Post, is the intel platform. They're all three symbolically the same. So this is essentially us showing up to Big Boss's intel platform on our own base offshore, and we're trying to figure out what the heck's going on. But we're also trying to not let him on to the fact that we're going to be doing all of these little sneak and peeks everywhere. So we've done the first two little sneak and peeks and we've taken out this commander. Now we've got to immediately go over and take out the intel, uh, the communications array, so that big boss back on his base on land won't get word as to what we're doing over here offshore. Because big boss is offshore and snake is here I'm sorry, Big Boss is onshore, and, and Snake is offshore here on the platform, and he's just having a field day. So he's like, that's why he's dressed up as Big Boss. He looks like Snake, you know, he's doing this whole thing. So, here in C2W, if you do all the mission tasks, there's also kind of a return to Vialo Village that you have to do, sort of the command strut again. And you got to rescue a couple of prisoners there. I think that actually relates to the Ground Zero's prisoner rescue site op as well, possibly. If you consider the admin sector of Camp Omega as kind of a stand-in of both the medical and command platforms, this kind of bears itself out. Uh, I'll get to how the admin sector is like the medical platform later, but Ground Zero's is... Oh man, it's such a freaking hallucination. Camp Omega is kind of... Oh, it, it's it's kind of a copy of three areas, but also itself stands in for more than three areas. So it's like it's it's a symbol for just three areas, but then from that symbolism, you can actually have it stand in for more than just those three areas, and it can stand in for like a whole bunch of different areas. So that's where you get these, like I said earlier, the R and D platform being superimposed with the support platform and the farms there. Um, I mean, this game has got layers, y'all. <laughs> so in C2W, we're rescuing those people. We have to find some hidden diamonds. Now, the hidden diamonds mission task comes up a lot in the Phantom Pain. It's something that came up in Phantom Limbs, actually. At the very beginning, there's a hidden diamond in Spook May Keep. So this idea of a hidden place is actually the subject of a later mission, Where Did the Bees Sleep? And I'll cover it more in depth there, but there's this sort of reoccurring theme of a hidden diamond or a hidden precious jewel, a hidden something that's worth something, you know? It's in the quarantine platform at Spook May Keep. 
It's here in um, in the Intel platform. Behind it, though. Now compare that to if Chico Cell is kind of like this Intel platform, the East Comms post. In Ground Zeroes, when you go behind Chico Cell, that's where Pause's cell was. It's empty, but there's a tape there. And the tape is Ground Zero's music. It's a self-referential thing, you see? So Pause and Chico, Pause is a reference to Chico in a sense. Pause is a self-reference to Chico, you see? They're, they're the same. They're equated in the symbolism of the game as being the same person. They're superimposed on one another in a lot of ways. Um, but, and I think it's because literally their genetics are the same. It's just one of them is expressed as male and one of them is expressed as female. I, th I think it's as simple as that. Um, but I think the base person for both of them is different. But the parasite stuff that is really their physical self is the thing, is the thing that's the same. Like, they're different base spirits with the same genetic body. Maybe you could think of it that way. So, C2W, again, we, we get these hidden diamonds. Think of it as, like, redacted dogs. Like, like how Chico's whole thing has been redacted here. All these hidden diamonds are, like, hints to be like, well, this is where something's been redacted, essentially. This is... And that's why the diamond becomes such a, an important symbol later on in the game. Why he wears it. Now, there's also some relations to Volgan that I wrote down here in C2W. Um, oh, yeah. Bridges in C4. So what do you use to blow up all of these, these satellite dishes? You use, usually the first time you do it, you use C4. There's even a voice line about using C4. Well, later on... When you fight Volgan, you'll find C4 is kind of useful. And in Metal Gear Solid 3, what did you do to Volgan? He's crossing the bridge and you shoot a bunch of, I think it's C3 actually. But Eva set a bunch of C3 charges on a bridge and you blow it up. So blowing up the bridges with the C3 is exactly the same as blowing up the intel dishes with the C4. Okay? The intel dishes are bridges. The communications stuff in this game is depicted as being like a bridge, okay, on a symbolic level. This is not an accident, y'all. This is very, very consciously done on an authorial level. This is not just me interpreting this shit for my own thing. This is literally Vulcan's on a bridge. What else would you call that? The C3 and the C4, it's the high explosives. It's the same stuff. And this is further corroborated if you think about the Intel platform being the devil's house. Where do you see the man on fire? Where's that boss fight? And voices, mission 20, on at the devil's house. So it's the same thing with the, use the C4 to blow up the, the, the um, well, there you would want to use it to blow up the, the water tower. And the tower is another great symbol. It, the tower is also the bridge. It's great. Uh, and then finally, I wrote down Lufua Valley here. I don't remember why I wrote down Lufua Valley here. Oh, yeah, because... One of your mission tasks here in C2W is also to extract a materials container. So think about what materials would you possibly be wanting to extract from the devil's house? That's probably the vocal cord parasite, like all the research materials. It relates back to what you do in Cursed Legacy when you go get Code Talker's research materials from those containers. So this container that you're getting in here in C2W is like a stand-in for the containers that contain all of the vocal cord parasite research stuff. But back then, I don't think he was actually researching the vocal cord parasite. Back then, Big Boss was actually research. He was researching the parasite in general and how to make these super soldiers. So this relates to the man on fire because this is probably the man on fire's body that Snake had. He probably had Volgan's body. Uh, I'm sorry, Big Boss probably had Volgan's body and was using it to research and create the Archaea by combining the Payne's DNA, which he probably also had, with Volgan's DNA. And that's how he makes the Archaea. So that's what's going on in C2W. Is you're, you're basically only getting one little slice, one little angle of the story, and it's told that, oh, we have to knock out the enemy's communications stuff. And it's like told to us to just be like, it's just a little intro thing so you can know to go knock out the intel stuff at later bases, but it doesn't really matter that much. It matters a lot, actually. They're just making you think it doesn't matter so that you fool yourself into not looking deeper at this stuff. 
so you won't con- discover all these connections between this mission and the Man on Fire and Lufua Valley and Code Talker and the Philosopher's Legacy and the Parasites and everything, Big Boss's Mutiny, like all this stuff that I've just talked about. So literally, that was a page and a half of notes that I've just gone over right there. We didn't even get into Mission 5. Um, I'm going to do more of these videos later. My head's starting to get a little light. I've talked enough here, I think. And this mission's getting close to over. But I, I do want to show you this little drawing I made that shows Afghanistan compared with our platform, our, uh, our, our Diamond Dogs base. So up here, hopefully it focuses on that. Focus, focus camera. I've got this camera on auto, so... Oh, there it goes. So yeah, there you, you can see there's the platforms and the way you see them once it's fully developed. Now, once you first start, there's a bunch of different formations it goes through that aren't looking like this. But essentially, this is what your what your base ends up looking like, right? I really hope that's in focus. It doesn't look like it's in focus from here, but it, the screen's too far away. So here's Afghanistan, and here's all of the stuff, and you can see Spook May Keep is 180 degrees, it's flipped upside down, so north to south in Afghanistan. That'll actually come up later in a mission, we can get that confirmed for us, I'm not just making that up. And like I said earlier, there's these four platforms that have all been swapped around. Base development and intel are the same, but the other four are all different. But if you look at the arms, leading out sort of the roads to all the these different outposts, and you sort of try to relate them to the shape of the bridges that lead out to each of those struts, they're roughly the same. Like You can, you can su pretty much superimpose those strut bridges onto the roads. You might have to shrink them or kind of stretch them a little bit, but they're basically, the bends are kind of the same type of bends in the same directions at the same angles. You might have you know one arm of it that's a little longer or shorter or something like that, but it's essentially the same thing. And... Well, we're getting ahead of ourselves if I do this. I'll just show it to you now. You can also do this for Africa and Peace Walker's base, but the fully built Peace Walker base. Now, not many people saw the fully built Peace Walker base because you don't need to fully build it to complete that game's story. And it takes a long time to fully do everything. But you get crazy stuff on that base. You get a hangar, which is basically... It looks like a, a whole airport that's part of your platform now. It's crazy stuff but that's this is what we're getting at africa is the off the onshore outer heaven base and afghanistan is the offshore msf strut all of the platforms and everything and missions one through nine in phantom pain are all replays of the lead up to the main ground zeroes operation and Camp Omega's whole deal is recreated in a couple of places, which I'll get to. And, oh, and by the way, Camp Omega is only these little triangle parts up here. Like, these three parts right here, this is Camp Omega. We'll, we'll get to it later. But, missions 10, 11, and 12 are essentially your recreation of the main mission from Ground Zeroes. Meaning that's like Mission 10 is basically your rescue of Chico, Malak. Mission 11 is like a recreation of the destroyed base at Abe Shifap Ruins. And Mission 12, which we'll get to later, corroborates the story that we hear about Skullface absconding from the base after its destruction with Huey. We are Skullface. We go get Huey and we leave. So, yeah, I'll get I'll get to I'll get to explaining this all more later. Uh, but yeah, there's there's lecture one in the bag. Y'all have have a nice day.